This is Ash's new annual meeting poster category called the Capacity Building Showcase. It casts a spotlight on capacity building initiatives for hematology patient care in low and middle income countries where needs are underfunded. The top 12 initiatives were selected out of inspiring submissions from around the world. Ash brought these far-flung collaborators to be featured at the annual meeting. One poster looked at the prevalence and mapping of sickle cell disease in northwestern Tanzania. We want to know the prevalence of sickle cell disease at our area, the leg zone, uh, which is a very populated and a lot of patients have been presenting with sickle cell but we don't know the real prevalence. We will make a map which can tell specific prevalence of every region so that we can uh, even find the easier way of providing this care even to the districts, to the uh, villages and even the government can know that this sickle cell is highly in our area and then can make a further intervention of the disease. And another poster showcases successful treatment of pediatric CML in Cambodia's first pediatric oncology hospital. Before 2013, so I can say that more than 99.99% children with cancer die, but now we have like so at least one third of them. And the biggest challenge is human resource, so for the pediatric, pediatric oncology training in Cambodia, there's like none right now. So with Ash and my hospital, we create one, then they create one, so like a fellowship. So I'm born right here. Another way that people can um, certainly help in this effort is to donate to the Ash Foundation. Now it doesn't matter how small your donation is, but all these donations are critical so that ASH can continue to do the excellent work that it is doing uh, on a global capacity scale. And um, just a final thought is that all the funds that are donated to the Foundation go to these projects. So we are really very excited about all these new initiatives that ASH is spearheading. You can view the top 12 posters in a special print edition of Blood Advances and can see all of the submissions at bloodadvances.org. Here is a look at a new initiative from Blood Advances. So another new feature is what we call Drug Advances, where we'll be highlighting new drugs that have been approved by the FDA for the treatment of hemologic disorders. And they'll be authored by at least uh, two experts, one who is important in the underlying biology of those drugs, and the other uh, to highlight the clinical application of those particular uh, drugs for hematologic uh, disease. We hope that that will be a great resource for our readers and uh, help educate us on how to best to use these new, new agents. ASH is helping to support and engage physicians to be better stewards of finite healthcare resources through its Choosing Wisely campaign. It's a joint initiative with the American Board of Internal Medicine to prompt conversations about tests and treatments that may not be necessary. The ASH Choosing Wisely list also recommends treatments and procedures in hematology that physicians and patients should question in certain circumstances. One example from that list would be not to test for, um, for inherited thrombophilia in a patient with a major risk factor uh, developing a venous thromboembolic. Um, event. Another would be not to routinely insert uh, IVC filters or inferior vena cava filters. That's another one. Um, not to, or to limit um, CT surveillance after curative intent, successful curative intent treatment of aggressive lymphomas. Those would be a, that's a sampling. Ash is also recognizing those who are eliminating costly and potentially harmful overuse of tests and procedures. These are your 2017 ASH Choosing Wisely champions. We felt like with sickle cell patients who come in with pain crises that we were admitting more of them to the hospital than we needed to. Uh, and so we were designing interventions to try to get them home and not have them stay in the hospital. We found just at our um, institution that we had a few patients that were coming in with iron deficiency anemia to the emergency department and they were actually getting transfused and some of them actually developed aloe antibodies. And so we thought, well, really, should they be transfused and are there other ways that we could tackle this issue? So we went through a whole process of trying to introduce other ways in terms of recognizing the patients that had iron deficiency anemia and managing them with alternatives such as oral and intravenous iron. And uh, the 
whole purpose was really to reduce inappropriate transfusions in the emergency department. We were trying to solve the problem of inappropriate use of blood products and also certain hemostatic agents that are very expensive and have risks including recombinant 7A and prothrombin complex concentrates. So by starting a review process and getting buy-in from the various services and departments, developing educational tools and feedback mechanisms, uh, we were able to show decreased utilization of all these projects.